Okay, so this video is a continuation of our first Chromebox Alpha video, and we're going to look at how to interpret the output that we obtained for all of those options that we ticked in the statistics button. So you can see here I've got my case processing summary, my reliability statistics, where we've got our Chromebox Alpha, our item statistics, our inter-item correlation, and our summary item statistics, item total statistics, and our scale statistics. Now I'm going to switch over to my PowerPoint slides just to make this a bit easier because then I can point to stuff. So our first is our case processing summary. So we can see we had 191 valid cases and 248 were excluded for a, whole, a total of 439. Now you see down here at the bottom there's an A and it goes with the superscript A that's here above excluded. It says list wise deletion based on all variables in the procedure. And that means that if there was a missing value for any of the items for a participant, they were deleted completely. So list wise meaning um, going horizontally by row, if a participant had one missing value, that participant was omitted from the Chromebox Alpha calculation. Okay, our next one was our reliability statistics. Now we're going to read the Chromebox Alpha value and we are looking for something greater than 0.7. So 0.859 is pretty good. That's what we're looking for. Now, in Julie Pallant's book, The SPSS Survival Manual, she does note that if you have less than 10 items on a scale, it is difficult to get a high alpha. So you are looking for something that is above point, uh, 0.5 or 0 0.5. If you have anything less than 0 0.5, um, then it would be a cause for concern. Maybe there's items that should be deleted from the scale. Our next output is the item statistics. So here we can see the mean and standard deviation as well as the sample size for each of the items on our scale. And this is the same as if we'd run a frequencies or a descriptive statistics and um, produce some means and standard deviations. Our next output is the inter-item correlation. So this is the correlation of every item with each other. So for example, the second row here is item 2, correlated with item 1, and you can see it's quite strong because it's 0.75. Now you would expect all of these correlations to be positive because all of your questions should be worded in the same way. So remember I said all positively worded or all negatively worded. So if they're all going in the same direction, these correlations should be positive. Um, and the larger the value or closer to one, the stronger the relationship between the responses. Now, just like if you run a regular correlation, you're going to get ones along the diagonal. And that's because it's the correlation of an item with itself. So item one correlated with item one is going to be a perfect correlation. And also you'll notice that um, it's symmetric, meaning that everything above the ones is the same as everything below the ones. So we only really need to read one half of this table. Okay, so our next table are the summary item statistics, and here's where we have the item means and inter-item correlations. So this is the mean for all items in your scale, as well as the min, the max, and the range. Now the range is the maximum minus the minimum value, and we've got the variance in the number of items. So we already know there's five items in the scale. Now, uh, Julie Pallant again suggests that if you have a low Chromebox alpha because you have few items in your scale, to report the inter-item correlation here, which is this number uh, 0.552. If you have a high Chromebox alpha, you don't need to worry about it, but if you have a low value, like below 0.7 or below 0.5, if you have a few items, then do report the inter-item correlation. Our next table is the item total statistics. This middle column here is the correlation of each item with everything else combined. So item 1 correlated with items 2 to 5 combined together. Item 2 correlated with item 1 combined with items 3, 4, and 5. So it might be, sound a bit confusing, but if you think of it, it's each item by itself correlated with everything else grouped together. And the last column in this table that we want to look at are the uh, Chromebox Alpha if the item is deleted from the scale. So if you've got a low Chromebox Alpha, have a look at this column and see if I remove any particular item from the scale, does it significantly increase my Chromebox Alpha? So if my item was say, or my Chromebox Alpha was below 0.7, I would have a look here. If I remove something, will it increase my Chromebox Alpha to greater than 0.7? So that's how we can interpret our statistics outputted for our Chromebox Alpha.